first, I want to add someone very special to this conversation. I have been covering violence in, in Chicago for years, and so is Mary Mitchell, you've been hearing from. I've gotten the same frustrating excuses about why things haven't improved over <clears throat> and over again. I finally met someone who has some interesting ideas on what is going on here and how to fix it. Y'all like guns. Black boys like guns. You all like guns at the Juvenile Detention Center in Chicago, which is the biggest in the world. I've been working in there with young brothers for 10 years. So when y'all catch somebody and shoot them in the head, I see them the next day in the detention center. Y'all like guns. Man, join the Army or the Marines. His name is Victor Woods. He is standing by right now, and he's going to join us live with some solutions. And joining me to discuss this troubling issue, teen violence and the Darion Albert beating death, is author and motivational speaker. His name is Victor Woods. He grew up in Chicago. He spent time in prison and then wrote a book about his life. And the book is titled A Breed Apart. Victor, thank you very much for joining us. You know, you have been there. You're in the schools every week, almost really every day. And I've been asking this question for, I don't know, a year or maybe more. What is different about Chicago than other big cities that we seem to have this problem when it comes to gun violence and young people? What's different about this well, city? Well, first of all, Don, I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for having me. And, and, you know, Chicago is one of the places where the original gangsters came out of. Right. You know, this is a different kind of more complex problem. And one of the things that we have to do here in Chicago is you've got to put people who understand these young people. This is a, you don't go, if, you, if someone has cancer and you have a, a brain tumor, you go to a person who is a specialist at that. If you haven't been to prison, if you haven't carried a gun, if you have not been in a gang, you cannot tell anybody how to get out of a gang. I was in a gang. I used to be a GD gangster disciple. I've gotten out of that. I'm successful now. Had I not been in a gang, I can't talk but to these are, young there people. There are gangs in L.A. There are gangs in New York. There are gangs in Detroit. There are gangs all over. So what's the difference? Well, the, the difference is, is that these young people here are just a little more dangerous mm -hmm. and a little bit more violent than they are in those other schools. You know, one of the things, Don, these young people, because someone was talking about why these kids don't snitch. Black boys and girls on the South Side of Chicago don't live in a decent home. Black boys and girls on the South Side of Chicago don't have any health insurance, don't have any dental insurance. They don't have any money in their pocket. The only thing they have is respect. And when you disrespect a young black boy in Chicago, they are shooting other kids in the face because that's all they have. And it's not all about gun control because that young man, that young man died because of the rage those young men felt. It wasn't that they wanted to kill him. They were enraged and beat him with a board. There are families, though, who are on the south side of Chicago who come from two-family homes who don't all, don't necessarily do that, but the people who do it get on the news and, and end up taking someone's life. But here's the thing. What about personal responsibility? What about parents who should be in the home, should be teaching? What about taking that, back that, your own that, That's a very good question. Let's talk about the community, Don. The community, the school's in the community. The community is fed by the county jail, the state prison system that's in Chicago is now releasing, the governor's releasing a thousand inmates that are going back on the south and west side of Chicago. And it also involves, involves the juvenile detention center in Chicago. You can't begin to deal with the community until you begin to deal with the inmates that are coming out of prison without proper reentry skills and the children. The young man that killed that boy was in the juvenile detention center for nine accused months. Of killing accused. Kids. Accused. We have him on tape, but accused. He hasn't been adjudicated right. yet. Nine months he was in the juvenile detention center. I met him there. I met him there. And he was released without any infrastructure, without any money, with no place uh, 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 to go for, 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 to, to rehabilitate him. And he turns up three months later at Finger, and the first month of school murders a child. These things can be stopped, but they have to be addressed. Okay. And we haven't addressed them at all. Okay, so listen. Uh, what about at the top? When you talk about city officials, city leaders are saying we've been doing this. We have gun give, you know, give back programs. You can come. And Everybody's amnesty, giving the guns back down, but do the prim criminals, criminals don't give guns back. Somebody finds an old rusty gun in their house and brings it back. Criminals will always have guns. All we are good at in Chicago is mopping up the mess. We got to turn off the faucet. Police can't do it alone, though. They said that's not enough. We don't have yeah. enough police on the streets. No, it's not police about it's not about, it's not the, about the police. police. It's about the mentality of these young people. These, these see, there are professionals. I have some. 
a, a Chicago police officers that are friends of mine that are good people. But we have some Chicago police officers that are taking drugs and stick them in these kids' po pockets. They're in the detention center and arresting them falsely. That's why the community does not trust the police. The police have a cold of silence, Don, just like the people on the south side of Chicago so, do. But those are accusations. I mean, you're, that, you're making a Well, I've been in the well, detention center John, for 13 years, and I've seen things. and I've seen thousands of kids come in there and tell me that the police so put the kids drugs on, the, and they're not all lying. What do you say to the police department? I know that uh, we invited uh, the police superintendent on. He'd I'm saying on. to the police department to be as professional with those black and Hispanic people in poor neighborhoods as you are on the Magnificent right. Mile. Do your job and you, and have a, a, a sense of person, uh, a responsibility and professionalism just like you do for the people who live downtown Chicago. Okay, I know, I see, I know Mary Mitchell is championing the bit to get in. <laughs> Father Flager is here <laughs> sitting here as well. Uh, but we'll go... Let's go to Mary first and then get her response okay. and the father will get... Mary, what do you say uh, to what Victor is saying here? Well, of course, some of I agree with some of what he said. Uh, most importantly, I think... It's an issue we must address in our neighborhood. You had all those people out on Daily Plaza yesterday, ready for standing by, sticking behind the city. Why, where is the crowd when it comes to that? First of all, we're a city divided. That's why you had thousands of people who were white downtown waiting for the Olympics, and you didn't have... 99% of the people that were at that funeral were black. We're a city divided, yet the south side of Chicago is not Beirut. It's 10 minutes away from the Magnificent Mile. It is 10 minutes away from the Magnificent Mile. And the international community, see, one of the things to let you know how bad this problem is, no official in Chicago, not, nobody has said that perhaps it's not anti-American sentiment that caused the Olympics not to come to Chicago. Perhaps it's the fact that there are dead black children popping up all over Chicago. One that came over that happened while the mayor was in Copenhagen. Perhaps people outside of the United States said, clean your house. That's the truth of the matter. I would have loved for the Olympics to come here if it would have meant that there'd been prosperity on the south side of Chicago. But the bottom line, this is a 10-year problem that has been ignored. But we have to get outrageous as a community too. When the Bulls win the game, when they win, win the championship at, at, at USIU, or guess what? The whole city's beeping horns out on the streets, screaming and yelling. Why are we not out of our houses is screaming and yelling in the streets when a child gets killed? Every time a child gets killed in this city, everybody from the north side of the because south side the should be out in the street. Because the people on the north street. side of Chicago don't care about it oh, because they're not I don't know. mean I don't to them. I don't this know was a white child the same on the hair. south side. Mary, Mary, go ahead. I don't know. I wouldn't say that the people of the north side don't care. I think they do care. But what are they going to do. The they're struggling. They're struggling.